Welcome to the Dashboard Effect Podcast. I'm Brick Thompson. And I'm Landon Oaks. Hey, Landon, you were just at the Build Conference, uh, Microsoft's uh, developer conference, uh, what, two weeks ago mm-hmm. out in Seattle? Or was it last week? I think it was last week. You got back last Wednesday. I think it was two weeks ago. Okay, yeah, two weeks ago. Wow, yeah, time flies. All yeah. right. Yeah, I've been meaning to record this with you. So wh- I wanted to just kind of talk to you about a couple things that were main topics there. One is Fabric, mm-hmm. Microsoft Fabric, which we've talked about in the past. Um, and then, uh, well, actually, let's just talk about that here. We'll just talk about that for about 10 minutes, and then we'll come back with another episode and, and talk about agents. Yeah. So what are you seeing on the Fabric front? Yeah, so I think... You know, in a high level uh, synopsis, I, at Fabric still has some bugs uh, to, that you got to work through. There's some gotchas in there, but they are adding all kinds of really cool new features. Um, you know, that's where they're putting all their eggs. It's so Fabric. On the data stack, they're not building on Synapse anymore at all. Yeah, data engineering is starting to slowly kind of go away from Azure and move into this Fabric ecosystem. Okay, so what are the cool things you're seeing? Yeah, so... Um, one that that they touted a lot that's not quite as analytics heavy, but it is interesting, right? They're moving actually Cosmos DB um, into Fabric, which is a big database uh, infrastructure that's meant for you know these giant apps like ChatGPT's backend, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's now going to be living in Fabric rather than Azure, which is kind of just shows you the direction they're going there. Yeah. Um, more interesting analytics stuff. Uh, one of the things I was most excited about uh, the right back feature in Power BI. Yes, right. People have been wanting that. And we've sort of done that in workaround ways with code or Power Apps or various ways, but yeah. they're going to make that native now. Yep, it'll be more native. So, you know, in the past, there's been tools out there. You can do it. They're usually expensive. There's uh, like Power Apps to your instance. Those are a lot of overhead. They're hard to develop. They, you know, they got to maintain them. Um and then, of course, tried and true Excel, which has its own problems. So yeah. now that it's in there, you can just click a button, enter my value, um, click submit, and then the report just refreshes. It was, it was really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah that's great. Interesting. I, uh, well, love to talk about the uh, mechanics behind that. There's <laughs> yeah. probably some cool stuff there. What, what else are they doing? Yeah. So some of the other things, um, one of the biggest drawbacks to, to Fabric when it came out was the lack of what's called CICD. Um, and so that's that's really to boil it down. It's a way to have multiple environments. So think development, test, production. Right? Okay. Yep. Um, and it's a way to move your resources between them really easily. Okay. And that was always lacking in Fabric. Uh, they didn't have it at all at first, and they added it for some very select resources. So it was a huge pain to have yeah. multiple environments. Um, so they're making big, big strides there. So they, you can share capacity between these environments. The capacity, that's an interesting question. You can technically, um, really with, with your capacity, you can configure it however you want. Okay. You can have all your workspaces use one. You can have each workspace have its own. You can, you know, kind of the sky's the limit there. Um, yeah. But the biggest thing is <clears throat> you can just click a button, and once I'm ready in development, it'll move everything that I did over into test. Um, you can select which ones you want to go, which ones you don't, so you can be more selective. So it's more flexible. Okay. Uh, there's still some drawbacks, right? Like um, lake houses still aren't quite supported there, but they, uh, they're they mentioning this is one of their biggest focuses on Fabric, so they've heard the, the developer feedback. Yeah, people get it. All right. And one lake is still the base uh, construct, right? We're, we're not using Azure Data Lake. We're using the Fabric One Lake. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, everything... Everything gets stored in your your one lake and fabric. I mean, behind the scenes, it's probably using some sort of, of Azure course. structure, yeah. <laughs> right? But uh, from what we care about, it's in one lake. Okay. Um, everything. Are right? there any draw? I I mean, we spoke when you got back. You know, uh, we still have clients that, because of the cost of some of the capacities on fabric and and uh, various uh, limitations, um, haven't wanted to go onto fabric yet. Mm-hmm. And and now, though, that Synapse is not going to be developed further much, I'm sure they'll fix bugs and yeah, stuff, yeah. Um, it seems crazy not to go onto Fabric. Um, you're just going to have technical debt. Um, one, one thing we should talk about before we finish is just the price of capacity and how they're doing that. But yeah. what are the gotchas? Are there still any gotchas you have to watch out for? 
Yeah, there's, you know, it's, you can tell it's still not a hundred percent solid, right? There'll be just small bugs that don't really have a rhyme or reason. You know, one day you'll be able to run this pipeline. The next day it just won't work. Mm. Um, then you have to wait a day and then it'll come back online. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one thing is the bugs. Um, you know, the more we play with it, the more we realize that there are certain things that will lead to those bugs more often. Right. So, you so can if you're careful, yeah, yeah, you can avoid them. And then the other thing too is with them releasing so many new features, um, we had a we had a pretty big gotcha, one of our projects where they released this great new feature called the copy job, it's supposed to replicate your data and keep it up to date. Um, well, turns out that there's no limit on how much resources it can use. Okay. So it used all of them and okay. locked us out for three days. Okay. So <laughs> be careful. Could, could have paid to unlock it, but yeah, can, yeah. Yeah, you right. can pay to unlock it. Right. But in this case, you know, we didn't didn't want to pass that on. Pass okay. that cost on. All right. So all right. So uh hopefully have someone who's got some experience with fabric if you're mm -hmm. if you're starting to to work on it who can steer you around those. But I'm I'm sure it's changing rapidly. So you yeah, just gotta keep up with it. It is. And and the one nice thing they're doing is anybody, um, as long as your admin allows you, right? Yeah. Anybody can start a free trial and that's your trial. So now you have your own capacity in fabric. You yeah. can play around with it. You can break it and you can you find can all the ways things. that that'll get you. Right. Yeah. Okay. So uh, on their capacity, that it used to be, uh, for example, if you wanted to use Copilot, mm -hmm. say in Power BI, you had to be on there. I think on their F64 capacity, yeah. which I think starts at like eight or nine thousand a month, yeah. something like that. So that was cost prohibitive for you know smaller smaller enterprises, smaller companies. Um, but now they've improved that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was another big announcement they made. So Copilot is now at F2 and up, so yeah. the lowest capacity you can possibly buy. And F2 um, is fairly inexpensive, but two, three hundred dollars a month. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, it, that was a big roadblock, right? You know, yeah. why go to fabric when I have to pay five to eight thousand dollars a month to have yeah. this? Well, now now you get it uh, at any tier, which is yeah. really cool to see. Yeah, that's that's good. And I'm sure they'll keep improving that. There is some sort of I feel like there's some opaqueness around what is my bill going to actually be? Mm -hmm. Because there's, you know, you can you can definitely have usage costs in there. Are there good tools for managing that and, and watching it? Yeah. Yep. So they have their own monitor report now. And that's kind of your central fabric command hub. Right. Um, I'm still learning it. Right. I still there, there's always that learning curve. Um, but there's some great resources out there that tell you how to use it. It's not very intuitive, but once you figure out all the different things you can do that are kind of hidden, um, it becomes pretty powerful. And yeah. so I've been enjoying it, but when I first opened it, I, I did not like it. So yeah. you got to learn it. Okay. All right. Well, it's like any, any new technology. Yeah. Sounds like at this point, there's no reason not to go full blast into fabric unless maybe you're on a synapse infrastructure it's working well for you and you don't want to yeah deal with that that that's the thing right like if i if we if i was going to build a brand new solution i would i would recommend just going with fabric but if you have a synapse solution that's working it's going to be stable you know yeah. I, I wouldn't expect Try that to go anywhere for another you know four or five years oh really just okay guess. i mean okay i did ask microsoft they didn't have an answer ready end of life um they said they haven't heard of anything so okay they're not talking about getting rid of it. It's just more in stability mode, right? Got it. What does migration from Synapse to Fabric look like? Yeah, and that's <clears throat> that's one nice thing is it's not not nearly as difficult as going from, you know, a Microsoft product to a Snowflake or a Databricks. Yeah. Um, a lot of the functionality is very similar. So if you have a Synapse workspace, for instance, a uh, lot of what you do in Synapse will also work. Be in the same. Fabric, yeah. yes. There are small things you have to change, though, right? Like, if you want to get real nitty gritty, like some coding semantics and uh, commands might have so to some slightly will tweak. Break, okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then, how do you do that migration? Yeah. So there's kind of two different ways. One is depending on the solution you're on. If you're on a data lake, um, you can you can move the data over, just copy over your notebooks, Into make those lake. small tweaks. Yeah. Okay. Now oh, okay. Good. Yep. If you're and on, how do you know that you need to make the small tweaks? Does it just break immediately? It, yeah, okay. you'll run it and and it'll, it'll although, break. Although there could be branches that you don't know for a while. 
it's possible, <laughs> but ideally you're you're looking at the data. Yeah, right? like yeah. you're checking, checking. Once I run it, I'm gonna go query this and sure. see what it looks like. The other thing that that's interesting that we haven't got a chance to play with yet. If you're on a dedicated SQL pool, um, which is you know the old Azure Data Warehouse yeah. in in Synapse, they do now have a tool that will supposedly move everything over into a warehouse in fabric oh interesting okay oh that's nice yeah okay good because i know a year ago i think one of our clients wanted to move to fabric and it was really a pain and difficult and in fact i think they ended up staying back on synapse if Mm -hmm. if i'm recalling it right now it sounds like that's not as big a deal. It shouldn't be, according according to to the people I talked to over there. Of course, yeah. you know I can't say for sure until we actually test it. But yeah, well, I, you know, I, I'm sure that they're not BSing, but you know, there's always gremlins, as you said. It's, yeah. it's early. Exactly. I think you were watching a live demo where a guy had something break. Unexpected. <laughs> mm-hmm. Didn't he say, oh, "I just did this. <laughs> I just tried it." And yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's the the curse of the live demo gremlins. So. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing a talk on uh, AI tools uh, last week to a set of. Uh, CEOs and one of the tools I wanted to demonstrate was uh, and and use cases was in Claude and Claude wouldn't come up so I went to, <laughs> I went to their status page and it just had a hard failure it was just down oh so God. you know of course during the live demo <laughs> is when that happens yeah. I'd never seen it before in two years of using it so yeah yeah all right um, anything else you want to cover quickly before we sign off. I think at a high level, those are, those are the biggest pieces that we are most excited about um, in terms of fabric. There's there's a lot more in terms of, you know, real-time data. They have this new feature called Digital Twin, right? It's not quite as relevant here, but they're cool new features that, that unlock new things you can do if you have a lot of IoT sensors. Cool. All right. So I'm sure we'll come back and talk about fabric a lot more yeah. mm-hmm. over the coming months. I appreciate the update. Yeah, yeah. All right. Talk to you soon. All right. Have a good one.